Hello everyone, I'm Mark Stongrass, and today I wanted to talk to you about how to leverage beast modes and date fields so that you can uh, build a card and be able to control what's being shown uh, without having to go in and manually adjust dates as the months change or the years change. I think that's really important to be able to build one card and kind of set it and forget it and count on it working over on the long haul. So I've got a kind of demo card here with uh, last 12 months of transactions, counting those transactions. And uh, for instance, one of the things I commonly do is I might not want to show an incomplete month. So the month that we're in, I want to perhaps not show that uh, because it's not all the way there and can be misleading that it's looking a lot lower than uh, the rest of the months. So one way I do that is by building a beast mode. And in this instance, I call it completed month. And it's build a case statement that I can look at the date of entry and then look at the last day of the previous month and say if it's less than or equal to that, then I'll include it, otherwise exclude it. So then when I put that into the filter and then choose include, then you'll see July is going to drop off, drop off because that's the month we're in right now and we're not done with July. And then it will just show June forward. And then when August rolls around, then July will automatically uh, start showing. And to break that down just a little bit more here on what we're doing, because we've got a few functions uh, going on in here, is the last day function. So that is showing the last day of the current date. We hop over here, we can look at this kind of broken down a little bit. So we just had the last day function by itself saying the last day of the current date. So that's going to find the last day of whatever month uh, you're currently in. And you see the last day right here. So we're in July right now. So it's going to change that value to July 31st. And you saw I had a date um, sub in there that's subtracting dates. So that date sub function, you know, taking that current date, whatever it is, and then an interval, and then what you want to change it by. This could be a day, year, and numbers that you want. So I'm, I want to move it back one month. So it would go, you know, today's July 26th. So it's going to move it back one month to June 26th automatically. And then combining that with the last day function uh, wrapped around that. You saw I had that, the last day function wrapped around this. So we're moving it, you know, as we said, from July 26th to June 26th. And that last day function will move it to the end of June. So then it becomes June 30th. That works. So then that's how this comes together. So then we can look at the entry date uh, in my data. Say, hey, is it less than or equal to June 30th? Okay, include it. Otherwise, we're going to exclude it. So that works really nicely. Another option you can do, but uh, has some caveats. You could just use the last day function itself and just look at the last day, move the entry date of the last date, entry date in the last day function to say, hey, is this the same? So that, you know, this tell us, is it in the same month as the current date? Otherwise, we're going to exclude it. If so, exclude it. Otherwise, we're going to include it. Um, this works well, except for when you've got um, future dates. So if your data has future data, and then it, would it wouldn't fall into this exclude, it would fall into the include, and that may not be what you want. So one way around that would be to uh, combine a second um, filter, would be is entry date greater than the current date, then that's a future. Otherwise, it's historical, and then you would drag this into your filter and just filter on historical. I don't have any future date in my data. So the only thing I'm seeing in here is historical, but you could do this as a second filter along with that option two, if you wanted to. So it really depends on, I'm showing you different options because you know, you know your data best and what's going to work for you and what formulas you're kind of comfortable managing. So I wanted to show you, um, those both to you. Another thing I often do is maybe I need to show uh, the same point in time uh, during a month. So if I want to be able to 
show July right now, but since we're on July 26th, I want to show the same number of days of transactions in those previous months. So I want to show uh, 26 days worth of transactions in these months. Well, we can do that with another uh, date function using the same point in time as, as what I've called it. So looking at the day of month function, so that's just going to extract the day number out of this field, and then we're going to extract the day number out of the current date. So it's going to extract the day 26 out of here, and it's going to extract whatever it is here. And if that's less than or equal to uh, what this is, then we will include it, otherwise exclude it. So it's going to say, hey, well, if the entry date is the fifth of the month and we're on the 26th, then that's going to go into include. Otherwise, we're going to exclude it. So that keeps us with keeping out those uh, 28th, 29th, 30th of the month in there. And we can, again, drag that into the filter and just filter on include. And then things will adjust and we'll get just the same point in time in there. So those are really helpful. And I've got this set here. This is really important, what your, um, what your date range is up here, what you want to graph by. And then that lets you avoid having to put in some static dates in here as far as that first example um, or doing some other uh, mani manual manipulation. I wanted to also show you another um, date tool I use. If I go over to next one and edit this. So sometimes I want to look at kind of the distance between two dates. So that's a date diff function. So this is going to take the number of days between these two date fields. And so if it's, you know, June 30th to June 1st, it's going to give me 29, whatever it might be. So that's going to give me a, a number. But then you see I've got this kind of range of numbers. So I'm going to build off of that function then to then build a case statement. So say, hey, when those when that's less than 10, then I'm gonna then that's gonna fall into the one to nine days bucket. Or when it's less than 20, then I'm gonna say that's in the 10 to 19. So on going forward. And then otherwise it's gonna be in the 50. Uh, it's important that you have this sorted correctly. Case statements work by once they find a match, they get they jump out and don't um, look at the rest of the statement. So make sure you've got things in, in logical or you see I've got the smallest going first and we're looking at less than um, you're going forward. So then I know that it's going to um, find the appropriate match on here. So then I can drag that date diff range into this category two. And I've got my transaction dates showing me the months down here at the bottom. And the other thing I did was take that same case statement, but then just put a numerical value on it at the end. And that I drag into the sorting. Uh, so then I can sort this appropriately. Because if it didn't have this in here, it's going to sort kind of in an odd order. And that's not what I want. So use that date diff sorting um, case statement and can drag that in there. And then I'm in good shape. So hopefully you found this helpful. Um, lots of different things you can do. There, I'll probably have a future uh, video on other beast modes might do uh, with strings and then also in magic ETL. It's also very useful using the formula tile uh, within there to do some different manipulations. So 